So uh, you might know me from Saltburn, not from seeing the film, uh, just from seeing the TikToks. But if you saw the movie, thank you. If you saw the movie with your parents, I'm sorry. And if you saw the movie with your girlfriend, you're welcome. The recently released movie Saltburn, helmed by director Emerald Fennell, proves to be profoundly unsettling, to say the least. Yet its impeccable shot construction makes it utterly captivating, compelling viewers to remain engaged. The film's visually appealing style, seemingly made for TikTok virality, is delightful when consumed in bite-sized portions. However, does the excessive focus on aesthetics overshadow the film's message? The visual elements of the movie bring about a vivid sense of nostalgia, as if drawn from a memory not too long ago. Shot on 35mm film, the shadows have a grainy quality. Despite the film's darker themes, vibrant and saturated colors stand out. The lighting, reminiscent of film noir, gives the actors' faces a classic Hollywood star appearance. In intense scenes, colored lighting, like the blood-red glow at the birthday party, adds a dynamic touch. The intimate aspect ratio directs the audience's focus to the center of the screen, encouraging a closer look. When writer-director Emerald Fennell and cinematographer Linus Sandrin discuss the upcoming film Saltburn for the first time, Fennell conveyed the desired feel of the movie – tactile, sensuous, erotic, but also this idea of a vampire movie. Saltburn delivers on its promises, and more. It follows the story of Oliver Quick, played by Barry Keoghan, an Oxford student who develops an obsession with his affluent and attractive classmate, Felix Catton, played by Jacob Elordi. Fennell's second film is both dark and seductive, yet vibrant and untamed. Similar to her first feature film, Promising Young Woman, Fennell aims to unsettle the audience through the film's visceral moments and enigmatic characters. Collaborating with cinematographer Linus Sandrin for the first time, he skillfully brings Fennell's vision to life through his visuals. The cinematographer secured the position based on a recommendation from Margaret Robbie, a producer for Saltburn. Robbie, having recently collaborated with the cinematographer on Babylon, was familiar with the captivating and atmospheric visuals he could create using 35mm film. The duo took inspiration from art, specifically the works of the Italian painter Caravaggio, renowned for his intense realism and skillful use of light and shadow, and drawing insights from films, including those crafted by Peter Greenaway. It also embraced the distinctive aspect ratio of 1.33 to 1, aiming to imbue certain scenes with a painterly quality. According to Sandrin, who earned the cinematography Oscar for his work on La La Land, this approach allowed them to compose more formal frames, creating a classic and beautiful visual experience. I think it helps very much with the intimacy of the closer shots we did of the characters, because you got really in there with them and to the voyeuristic approach we had as well. While drawing inspiration from traditional Gothic narratives and vampire films, Fennel and Sandrin were committed to avoiding an over-reliance on those conventional styles. It was really fun because we had a kind of palette that was established in a language that had been established by other people, by a whole genre, literary and film, but you can then stick your fingers right down its throat. But are these scenes shot that way just for the sake of looking good, or is the style benefiting the story? Let's analyze these three styles and see why they chose the aesthetic they did. Starting with... The scenes when they're outside in nature and by the lake are supposed to remind you of the summers you had. You were lying there in the sun by the lake, and the wonderful, summery hot, beautiful day that you're in. But at the same time, this lake is kind of gross in a way, if you believe the water, it's not like you really want to swim in it. And it's a subtle detail because it's seductive. They wanted the shots to look hot and wonderful, but then at the same time introduce these ugly, nasty things in the imagery. The setup for these scenes was the last dregs of summer in England. It was September, so this is all natural light, so-called golden hour. There's things happening with the film that somehow makes it look slightly impressionistic. Since they're not shooting digitally but using film stock, it helps to bring that forward, because it's more like when you paint something rather than actually photograph it. All of the night scenes have this blue tint. Aiming for gothic aesthetics, the filmmakers often design shots in a minimalistic but theatrical way with dramatic backlights through fog and no fill. Exterior night scenes were often suspenseful and voyeuristic, and where vampire influences really came into play in the shot and lighting design. The main aim was to light these scenes in a way that distinguished different scenes in an expressive way, suggesting the vampire theme from the start without revealing the story. 
Red goes like a theme throughout the film. The corridor between Oliver's room and the bathroom is painted in red. The heart of the house is the staircase where Oliver has the birthday party, and it's drenched in the red light. He stands isolated in there with the yellow light from the candles, and gets singled out in a way where he still looks isolated even though there are hundreds of people around him. Visually, it's almost like a black and white shot. The same thing is present in the dining room, where there are stark red colors with blackness. Although they look like black and white images because of the monochromatic color palette, the great thing with color is that by being red, the scene signals something. Red could be death, it could be lust, it could be internal body. It's a great color for being expressive. And if you want to color grade your videos and photos like Saltburn and other movies, check out our Movie LUTs and Lightroom profiles.